Hello and welcome back to part three. This one is about an hour long. So sit back, buckle up. Before we start, I'd just like to credit Plunder True Crime. Once again, please, if you haven't already, go over and subscribe to her channel. She does some brilliant work. So, let's get on with this. If stuff is falling instead at this point, it's turned off. Finally, finally, Jen responds to me and they said they're making arrangements to go inside, to get a pass, they'll take me upstairs to the press, press conference. So by the time I got up there, it was over. Now I'm just trying to, where is everybody? Mm -hmm. And But the only call I, that came in, because I wiped out everything that I could think of to wipe out, because if he's going to have access to that phone, like, I've got my contacts in there where I put all my passwords and username and passwords. Uh, I know the store and passwords, but you know, I want quick access to it or something, whatever. Other information. What are you going to do? No, no, just no, just say, it. Just yeah, say it. Just tell me why. Yeah. So, um, and then anything else that would have been uh confidential that I didn't want to have access to, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I deleted off of there. Um, because again, I only expected them to use it for, for a short time because the police said. In the lobby, hey, we're going to get your phone back, we're going to get your car back. Well, I knew what, I knew what that was about. They were, mm -hmm. they were going to escort him without handcuffing and what have you. They wanted him to be comfortable mm -hmm. and what have you. So I didn't expect to lose my iPhone as a result of that. Which you should be able to get that iPhone back, but I'll double check and let you know. Well, I was going to say that. Yeah. Because yeah. I asked Alec about it. He said, well, it's being transferred to the city. And I said, well, this is going to be a slow process. So anyway. No, we should be able to get you your iPhone back. Yeah. His other phone, no. No, no, no. I uh, you expect that. No. What about the car? The card number. Yeah, yeah, we already know that. Yeah, I've already kissed that goodbye. Okay. Okay. Um, we, we use that as a poodle ambulance. Yes. Right. Okay. The, the silver card because the, you know, the dogs go to the vet or if they have some surgeries or the, the puppies are already mm -hmm. the back seat, you know, could be smeared with puke, blood, and what else, but it, we call it the poodle ambulance. Did when you gave Stephen this car to go to Kissimmee? Clean inside? No, 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 no. It's a poodle language. Uh, you know, we're not going to have that car detailed. You know, and then he, if he's using it, and of course, Debbie had a bunch of her stuff in it. But no, that car was not clean. Okay. And I and I said, well, if they're going to, if they're going, to, if, if forensics is going to go over that, I mean, you know, I tried to tell somebody. I said, you know, it's a poodle ambulance. There's going to be some leftover puke blood or what have you that we weren't able to get out of the seats because they're perforated. Mm -hmm. So somebody, I hope somebody doesn't get too excited when they hit hit on something. But it's animal blood mm -hmm. as far as I knew. Yeah, but they can tell. By testing, whether it's animal blood or human blood. And they'd be able to tell as well whether it's Madeline's blood. But I don't think it would be. I th because Madeline was in the front of the car. And then they've got him on a f recording in a car park, putting her body into the boot of that car. So I don't think it's her blood. Okay. Have you talked to Steven since he's been arrested? No. We tried to set up a video visitation yesterday. It said we were confirmed. Uh, my, uh, my iPad and my iPhone crashed a couple of times when I'm trying to get on. And so then finally got it. Flares yesterday. What? what? They said we had three solar flares yesterday. Facebook went offline and a lot of people, a lot of Verizon went off and some other... And I thought, well, maybe that's what kicked us off yesterday. But when I finally got on it, uh, he wasn't there. So, you know, I I, I, <clears throat> I kind of expected that could have happened because, again, uh, you know, again, we were warning, I said, you know, if he's not available, well, he's not going to be available and won't, won't be there. But mm -hmm. I figured since I had confirmation, but I haven't had any conversation whatsoever. Have you talked with Jen since he's been arrested? The last conversation, a text I had from her was when I asked her if, they, if she had gotten access back into the townhome. Because if there was anything that Stefan had there, like supposedly he had his gun there, I wanted to get it out of there mm -hmm. and away from harm and bring it back here where somebody else could do anything with it. And I was making arrangements to do that. And she said yes. And then I didn't hear it back from her after that. So she's gone dark eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has she worried about? Uh, well, she she's avoiding me for, for whatever reason. Because up until that point. Well, we have her phone. Oh, you have her phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that may be that may be one of the reasons. That's well, if I'm sending you love notes, I'll be teasing. <laughs> I'm sending you messages now. I, now I know it's why it's not going to answer. Because the last thing I, I got from her was yes, she did, and then I sent her another message afterwards. Well, I'm sure she's lawyered up by now. 
Si Shugev. Trying to get some more information and again, trying to make arrangements to get, get the gun out there. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have the gun? Or is it safe? Yeah, we have it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, at least it's in safe hands. What? I'm sorry. I said we'll never see that again either. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. you definitely will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm just concerned that it's in safe hands. That's yes. the other thing I was concerned about. I didn't want, because they have roommates there. I don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. And somebody could take that, and I didn't want that to happen. Have they ever talked about their roommates at all? No. No, we don't we know if there's sex. We don't even know if it's guys or girls. Right. Like, yeah. Now, did, did Jen ever talk to you about Sunday night after the party? Regarding what? Regarding the fact that there was probably drinking with the adults at the party, that she and Stefan would definitely have been vaping that her meds were not working, and Sunday night when she went to bed with Maddie and Stefan was in Maddie's room to sleep, that she woke up with a headache, and she told Maddie, and she told us, she told Maddie to go go, go sleep with Stefan mm -hmm. in her room. And in I, her room or his room? And when he, when his he, room. Well, that isn't what we've heard. We heard that she sent Maddie and Stefan up to bedroom number four because she needed a good night's sleep. So what is it? They wasn't at the party, so they couldn't have been drinking at the party because they wasn't at the party. So that doesn't make sense to me. He was sleeping in Maddie's room, and she sent him. She specifically said because she told him, she says, "I told her to go sleep with Stefan." And I was like, "Like the antenna popped up." I said, "What a stupid thing to do! Like, why would you do that? You, you've got plenty of room on your bed. Why would you send him, send Maddie in there to, to go on a single bed with Stefan? Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense to me." Do you know if they've ever talked that, about that in the past that they would allow Maddie and Stefan to sleep in the same room together, or no, the three of them sleep in the same bed? That's the first time I'd heard that, but when, when she started talking about Maddie coming and sleeping with him at night, climbing in bed with him at night, mm -hmm. and then Maddie told me, that's where she told me, she says, yeah, I was sleeping with mom and dad, and, and I rolled over, and uh, and I ended up with my leg over Stefan's leg, and she giggled about it, and I was like going, that was the second time. I said, and I told you, and I said, listen, she's getting too old to do this. She's too old to share a bed with you. Mm -hmm. Don't do it anymore. I said, you have to lock your bedroom door so she can't come in when you guys are asleep, then you need to do that. I said, I can understand a toddler. Mm -hmm. I can understand it's about, it's about five years old. But after that, I mean, this is ridiculous. So I, 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 was, I was very upset about that. And that's one of the other reasons. So she knew how Maggie was with Stefan. So, oh, this makes me madder. This gets me madder. Oh, my God. Uh, I want to go back to the med the medication that Stefan. So Stefan on Saturday asked you if you had any of medicine to calm his anxiety. anxiety. Did he have prescription medication that just wasn't filled or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he didn't have any medicine for, to take to consume. Well, no, not, not that we're aware of. And uh, one of the things I was pressing hard with Stefan when he left Disney, I said, talk to human resources to get your insurance coverage mm -hmm. after you leave because you need it for prescriptions. And so uh, up until two weeks ago, uh, I'm assuming he had enough medication to get him through, but he needed some medication. So we're trying to get him back on insurance, which I did. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, there was a waiting period of a few days that we were supposed to call in and then arrange to get his prescription filled. He contacted the doctor supposedly because I told him to, and there would have been a prescription waiting, waiting for him, but it never got filled. Gotcha. Okay. When did he start taking prescription medication? Do you remember? He started taking Adderall when he was a child. I mean, he's, he's, he has a TBI, and so he was on an IEP through school in the adult education program. He went to special classes. Uh, he was hit by a truck when he was eight, hit in the back of the head with a bumper, run over his torso, and then the guy heard a right screen, put the car, drive, and drove back over and got him in the front of the head. And then, uh, so he... Well, how, how long has he been, has he been seeing the, uh, the psychiatrist, psychologist? The counselor there? Yeah, the counselor. About four years. So he, she was prescribing medications for him at least four or five years ago, whenever he started going to the counselor. So when you last saw him on Saturday and he's having this episode, the next time you see him is Tuesday night, going into Wednesday? Wednesday, Wednesday morning, 2.15. Early in the morning. Yeah, got it. Okay. Change in his demeanor, I'm, I'm assuming, was uh, different? Just very stoic. You know, 
no emotions. Uh, again, I've attributed to maybe medication he's taking and the fact that. Where would he get that medication? From Jen, if he was going to take it? Yeah, that, that oh, yeah. Jen said, oh, don't worry about it. I have some meds here he could yeah. use. Mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> the fact that uh, we're now looking at early Wednesday morning, now going back to 5 o'clock, well, actually, even sooner than that, since he could do the two events. So from that Monday afternoon or sometime Monday all the way to Wednesday early morning, mm -hmm. I don't know how much sleep he's had. I know he's been uh, under a lot of pressure, obviously, from questioning and interviews or what have you. Uh, so I didn't expect to see much of him, uh, much other than just being somewhat stoic, kind of zombie, you know, out of it. That's when I, you know, when I left him in his room, he was sitting in a chair. And matter of fact, I remember hearing a comment with Jen when I was talking to him. They were driving over to the hotel. You know, she's yelling at him to wake up because he was sleeping in the car. Mm -hmm. And when I left him that in his room, sitting in that chair, he looked like the guy that was going to pass out. And to hear that he drove down to Northport mm -hmm. and back, shocks the shit out of me. Unbelievable. So, you know, the guy was like out of it and, and where he came up with all that energy to do that. And then, and then, uh, when he comes back to the hotel room, he's got an energy drink and then he immediately calls to the bed and he is dead to the world. You can't wake him up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, all these hours and everything else finally caught up to him, but there was no waking him up. He was passed out. Okay. Jeremy? I seriously don't know what he would have done if he had access to the house, but what he didn't realize is that when Chris leaves, this house gets locked up like Fort Worth, mm -hmm. like Fort Knox, whatever it is. But because I never, I never oh, locked no. the door because it's a pain in the butt to get it up into the security position. And Elliot dislocated my thumb, so not one of these dogs are ripped a tendon. So I'm right-handed, so it's even harder. But uh, I did do that because I don't know. I do want to touch that. When Northport was here, apparently they were given a computer. Is yeah, that yeah. Right? Okay. Because yeah. there was a, uh, a desktop. Computer mm -hmm. sitting in your tower, and I said, and I told Alex, I said, hey, you know, he's got a, uh, a tower unit here, desktop. I said, you guys want it? And they said, yeah, we'll probably do that. And so we got to remind the Northport police that it's okay. Okay. Do you know uh, what Stefan's dominant hand is? Who's what? Dominant hand. Right. His right. Uh, a couple questions. I know you mentioned part of his childhood and having that traumatic car crash. Um, what else was? His childhood, like, do you have a pretty normal childhood? Do you have siblings? Only child? Well, he had an old, has an older brother that was in the Navy, but yeah, yeah they're eleven it's, years apart. So it's basically like having raised two single children. Okay. Because of the age separation, what have you? I mean, his older brother, uh, they weren't very close because of the age difference. So his older brother was never around that much. Okay. Well, he, he joined the Navy right out of high school. He, he and a few of his friends, and they've done wonderful with their lives. But uh, yeah, no, he loves animals. Always picking stuff up and bringing it home. Would not do a single chore around the farm when we had the farm. Uh, is, he a clean, is he a clean what? type person? Or what's his God? No, he's lived in a. Did he, did he use a C word? <laughs> clean? No, no. It, it, always a challenge to get him to pick up his room. Mm -hmm. Always. I was gonna. I was going to surprise him and put a hazmat sticker across his door mm -hmm. because I opened it, looked at it, and shut the door again mm -hmm. and said, "I'm going in there." So then I offered to help him clean his room. I said, look, it's hard, it's hard when it's that bad to even know where to start. Mm -hmm. I said, I will help you. Yeah, we tried to encourage him for sports. He played played baseball like he ran track. Ran track, but uh, you know, he he uh, you know he said fine as a kid growing up, and I think I don't know, maybe later this brain he, injury started. He up. did not, he did not, he did not have very close friends. He had a couple of close friends and some acquaintances, but those are the only ones. And um, he took he took Shotokan Karate with Brian. Uh, they got up to a brown belt. Um, How are his emotions as a kid? Volatile, but also, I mean, even in kindergarten, before the accident, he was he did participate with the other kids a lot. He would rather he would rather go and make up his own game and do his own thing than that. He was has a very high IQ. He's very intelligent, and, and I think that. I was in college at the time too, trying to finish my degree, and I had all my my books, oceanography, and stuff like that. And he was interested. And when he was little, he was looking at my college textbooks, and I taught him to read. And he was reading at probably a fifth or sixth grade level when he went into first grade. Okay. He has a marvelous vocabulary. Um, he has a great mind for history. If something interests him, he goes all in to research it. So well, yeah, if he's if he's passionate about something, he will he will put that focus. He becomes, I mean, he becomes an expert. You gotta, quick. 
you know, came passionate about whiskeys. You know, mm-hmm. Ask him anything about whiskeys. Ask him anything about teas. I said, Steph, go to the liquor store. And if you got this much knowledge, put it to use. You know, then you get involved in these games and what have you. But boy, if you got focused on something, laser focus. And that really at an early age, because we came down from Georgia to Disney World, and he got the key to the to the liquor bar. The bar. And, and he stayed there focused until he got that key and unlocked it hmm. at three years old. I mean, he was like, that laser focus. He didn't want liquor. He wanted candy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he was... The expensive candy that's in those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, 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 he was very, very over with us that he wanted more candy because we bribed him with candy all the way down on the plane. Mm. We were waiting for the car to come to get the, the car seat put in, j- jump seat for him. And, um, and he, I'm going to let you tell it because I saw that. So we're, we're in the car. We're on the way to this dinner, and he's in the back seat wearing a sailor suit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want candy. No, Stefan, I'm looking at the rear view. No, Stefan, can't. We're on the way to dinner. Don't no, dinner. I want candy. No, you can't have candy. And he goes, uh, I looked at my rearview mirror, looked at her, and just started laughing. And I said, "No candy." You know? <laughs> and so everybody's complimenting how cute he looks and what have you. So I got to tell you, a cute story. Well, he's, he he had obsessed with stuff sometimes, but you know. And I am loud. When I'm frustrated, I yell. Mm-hmm. I don't scream. Somebody close that I'm a screamer. I don't scream. I yell. If they want to hear a scream, I'll show them a scream. But um, she's yeah. Irish. Yes. Do not upset the Irish. <laughs> I am Irish. I have an Irish temper. I, I, I go from zero to blow real quick. Mm-hmm. And and I do yell. I do not beat. Cannot be said physically, but I yelled. Most of the time I'd be yelling from one room to another, but it, it, I yelled. A former DI I'm, in, in the Air Force. Yeah. And she tried that on me very early in our marriage, and I said, no, sorry, I'm not going to fall for that. <laughs> we, made, we, made, we made a pact when we got married, because we got married, we didn't know each other. We knew each other for five weeks on the phone. We met again at our tenure high school reunion. Got married six weeks later. I was in California. He was in Georgia. That back then the, the rates changed at eight o'clock my mm-hmm. time, eleven o'clock his time, and he called me. So we did our courting on the phone, and he came. We got married, drove across country in my two forty Z back to the hills. Two forty Z. I I fly out to California. And she's got all these boxes piled up in the family room. I go, what's that? That's going with us. It, 240C. So let me tell you what's going in there. Cases of course, because you can get course west of the Rockies, east of the Rockies, and my golf clubs. But these boxes are not going to fit in that 240C. It's just you, me, the beer on the golf clubs. That's it. And we drove across country in that thing. Wow. But anyway. But, but, oh, we yeah, no, so, no, I, He told me, he says, whatever you do to me, I'll go back to you. Because I slapped him once. Mm-hmm. He said, you want me to slap you back? I said, no. <laughs> he said, don't slap me. He said, so whatever you do to me, I'm going to do to you. So the next time I got mad, I dumped popcorn on his head. Mm-hmm. He picked up the bowl, took some left, he dumped it on my head. I said, all right, I get it. I get it. I get it. And we have never, mm-hmm. we don't fight like that anymore. We sit down and talk mm-hmm. when we're calm enough to finally sit down and talk. Right. There's a lot of, we, a lot of me going to my Five minutes later, it's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, there's no, there's no grudges held. But with him, it's, it's, you never know, just like, like my mother, you, you never know when something's going to trigger him that reminds him of something he was mad at you before, and then he gets mad about that all over again. Mm-hmm. She did too. I, I don't see any right reason to do that. But Tell me about his relationships growing up as far as intimate. Do you guys know anything about those? Do you know, date I know, much? I know some. I know. She would know more me. Okay. His first real love was Kindle, and that was in California. And that's... um. What age was that? High school. Yeah. High school. Yeah. Early early high school. Like freshman year. Okay. Freshman year, freshman year. Yeah, 15, 16. Yeah. And that was um we loved Kendall. And Kendall loved him. He loved her. That was the only reason he didn't want to leave California was because Kendall was gonna be there. And um Were they the same age? Yes. 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 And then when we came to Florida, there was this crazy girl. Um other other relationships that were just short, you know, nothing Nothing long term. Yeah, just cycle through a bunch, bunch of girls, and, and the guys, the guys he was hanging out with didn't didn't approve of him because they just seemed like uh, no motivation, no drive. You know, I grew up, I grew up with the, you know, I grew up in Winter Park. I hung out with the elite uh, mm-hmm. people in, in in Winter Park. You know, the Show Walters and, and the Manellos and what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked at the hardware store, Miller Hardware in Winter Park, and so you know, I had drive. You know, I wanted to get ahead, and I, I associated with the better crowd. Kids, he never did. I never approved of them. They were just lazy. 
you know, looking for the next party, looking mm-hmm. for the next hit of marijuana. But, uh, you know, so there was this cycle of those people all the time. But nobody steady that we were, they were aware of. You could, you could bargain with him. I, all of his friends were getting tattoos. Chase decided that they were all going to get branded with 521. They're 521 Club in Windermere. He had, had the brand on his side. They did it with coat hangers. And I said, if you promise not to get tattoos, then for your 18th birthday, I will take you to a tattoo parlor mm-hmm. and I will get you something that's meaningful. You don't want dice or Popeye or something stupid that you're going to wear when you're 70. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you want? He said, I want the coat of arms. Mm-hmm. I said, I will do that for you. But you let me pick the tattoo parlor because I want to make sure they're clean, they're reputable, mm-hmm. and I will pay for it. And he did. And he didn't get any other tattoos beyond that. And so it's right back shoulder. Mm-hmm. I said, don't put it someplace where it's obvious. Uh, I know you said that you didn't necessarily approve of some of these friendships. And then you yeah. said he dated a crazy girl or one or two. She was crazy. Um, were there any inappropriate relationships with no. females? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Never. Did you ever see a change in what he was attracted to? No. No. Well, I, don't, I didn't no. know what he was attracted to. He was attracted to boots. Yeah, but I, I don't know what he was attracted to. Big boots. It was a very, I, I can't recall other than one or two girls at, at our house, but there were groups of people when, mm-hmm. when that was there. But I don't, I don't even know who he dated. And, and, and per se, I mean, there was one girl. That, that was a steady for a while, but other than that, I don't know who he dated because he dated outside the house and they didn't come to our house. He didn't date, he had hookups. But whatever. And the thing is, is that the girls initiated them. They were calling him all the time. Mm-hmm. He was calling them. And then his wingman, Chase, was laughing one day. He said, boy, I'm glad, I'm glad Stefan's my friend. I said, why? He says, because he attracts all the girls and I get the ones he doesn't want. <laughs> What's Chase's last name? Leonard. 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 Yeah, Leonard. 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 Oh. L-E- L-E-O-N-A-R-D. Leonard. He went around here or? No, he was, I don't know where this, but he, he, he was. was in oh, okay. he, that, whatever. He, oh. he called into that awful <coughs> website, Great Hughes Investigations. He called into YouTube. it? He mm-hmm. called into it. People are calling into it, saying stuff about him I've never heard, never witnessed, never known. And um, and I am an, I am being flayed. Mm-hmm. Being flayed because... As I said, I'm the yellow, but I never did anything bad back here. I don't um, bad any of them except to save them. We touched on Stefan and Jen's relationship. Yep. Tell us about Stefan and Maddie's relationship. Maddie called him dad. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time that they were here, Stefan was sitting in this chair. Jen was here. Maddie was on that side. And she was leaning over with her arm around Stefan's shoulders and petting him with his, her hand, you know, because she was getting ready to go to sleep. So she came in to get her hugs and kisses goodnight from everybody. That's the, I mean, he didn't really interact with her. In front of you guys. Right. Right. Did she act that way towards Gen 2 that same time? She came and got a hug and kiss from Gen 2. Okay. She even gave, I think she... When I came into bed, she gave me a hug the night too. That was it. Did you see any changes in Maddie over the years in her personality? No, well, we talked about that the other night. It's like there was nothing visible or noticeable about it, changing her attitude, demeanor, what have you. Uh, and again, we hadn't seen we hadn't seen Maddie since uh, uh, maybe early twenty three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think at the same time, Jen got a car. They came down for a night. Um, didn't notice anything out of out of the ordinary. Seemed like all the experiences that we had observed in the past. You yeah. know, happy kid, playing with the dogs, um, and you know, watching TV in there, going to the bed, or floating around here. Did you know her to be on uh, prescription medication? No, I did not. Not, no, not at that time. She was just just starting it. That was something that was worrying Jen a lot. She was just starting to show uh, the bipolar, and they thought that was why she was becoming so. Uh, combative with Jim. I know you touched on it earlier, but you said Stefan didn't have that to your knowledge. Stefan didn't have access to your storage unit. No, to my what? To so, your no, to my storage unit. No. Who all has access to it? Just you. Just me. Okay. I don't even have a key to it. And when it, when you say when I ask access, is it a code to get into the secure gate and then a padlock? Yes. Okay. And only you have have those codes. I have the code. Um, it's in my, it's in my phone as a contact record, mm-hmm. but as far as I know, he did. 
have that code. Um, now, I am missing a key. I have been missing the second key for over a year. So when they first started telling me about hey, the key came down to access the unit, I started to think, well, that explains where the other key is. But uh, I could have could have lost it, but I had no idea where the, where the key is. And the only way to know whether or not anybody else accessed that is if the storage unit printed out it. Mm. And because I don't access it that often. So I was here the morning that the storage unit was searched. Was searched. Uh, is there anything of like tremendous value in there? I know there's a bunch of bins. I see a few suitcases and stuff like that. Yeah, just just overflow from the garage. Um, I was going to go over and look look to see if anything had been moved because I, I could imagine Steph going in there. There should have been a bunch of dog crates piled up, mm -hmm. and uh, it's packed. Other than just a small section between the the bulk stuff and the racks that I have there. Where I have access to the right. He did have some boxes of his stuff. Yes, but it's, it's his way so far, so far back that he, he would have to empty the whole storage unit out to get it. Okay. Back in the left hand corner. It's, it's well, that's too much work. He, he would be willing to do that much work. As a W in the world, he would do it. Um, did you guys ever witness or hear him looking up inappropriate stuff on the internet? I have no idea because he we never had access to his rooms. He didn't use our computers, he had some. Um, obviously, his room is over here. That Do you mind if we look? Yeah. yeah is, it, is it the same way it was, pretty much? No, we yeah. started cleaning clean it out mm -hmm. because we, uh, 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 it, it's just, he's, he's existed there. We have a touch that room. At this point, he said, well, there's no way in hell he's ever coming back here. We're just going to gain access back to this room. We gave, and we gave the other so even his parents realized there's no way he's coming back. And I've been in and cleaned the room out. But she didn't do anything. All she done before the police actually went in was just picked up all the rubbish off the desk and put in a black bag and left a black bag there for the police to look in if they needed to. So once they'd been in, they then went in and did the rest. But I just feel so sorry for them because this is their son. Their baby. They've got another son, but this is their baby. The other son's like 11 years old, so the other son's going to be 51 in his 50s. So, and we can't be, yes, okay, the mother probably molly cuddled him, and they have probably bent over backwards to help him, and all this lot, but they cannot control what he does, what he says, and where he goes. They can't control that. And they shouldn't be, because he's 40, isn't it 40, or whatever? So they shouldn't be controlling that, and they can't control that. So we can't go around bad-mouthing the parents for something he did. He's complete access to it before he touched anything. Okay. Yeah. And the stuff that I had thrown away, the trash off of his big table, I had left there in a bag. And I said, this is all I have done at this point. And if you want to go through the bag, you do it. You know, I... So we're just getting rid of clothes and then trash that's in there. And then, like I said, it's it's um, it's going to take a while for us just to get in there and sort it out and figure out if there's anything of value that, that, that could be sold. Um, and... So, but it's pretty much the same mess that he, that he left it in. Okay. Um, that's all I have for me. I got this. I got the floor slipped a little bit. That's one. You mind if we take a picture of it when we go? Oh, yeah. If you want to go ahead. Do you mind if I take a picture of your notepad? Of your notepad? Well, I'll just give it a note. Do you have more? No. Do you want me to take a copy of it? In case somebody else wants to know the same information? Oh, I can go do that. Okay, to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have the original pictures of the room before I touch it if you want to see those or I can send you copies of it. Yeah, yeah. if you don't mind, let me do it. There's my card. If you can just, if you want to email it to me, that might be the easiest. I took pictures because it was so, so disgusting. Take a while. I've got a week's worth of pictures. Yeah, no worries. You do a lot of pictures. Hmm? Do you like Trump? <laughs> I'd rather 
hold my opinion to myself, especially being on the record. I'm not going to say it on the record. I was just going to say something cute. Can I make a personal observation? Absolutely. Thank you. What are you showing? <laughs> that is funny. Oh, so when this thing came down Wednesday, after we meet with the detectives and their personal escort, what have you, and then everything will start at 4 o'clock. 4 4, I get a text message. Finally, I get a text message from Jen trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And uh, she texted me and said, Get Stefan a lawyer now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? And then she says, Well, they have found these images on Stefan's phone that there's sex acts between Maddie and, and Stefan. I go, I, I disbelieve and go, okay. And I asked her how long. She said, two years. And and she said something to the effect, uh, something to the effect, like he needs a lawyer up. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that was just really weird. And so... A few hours later, she finally comes out of the, out of the, uh, I'm communicating with her before this, and, and so I got to go get something to eat, and I uh, got to use the restroom, the station's locked up, I can't get in, and she said, well, they said, go up to Wawa or something, I said, okay, and the next thing you know, no, they're going to let me out, I'm going to get something to eat. So she comes out, and demeanor is just matter of fact, you know, everything's fine, mm -hmm. and uh, we get in the car, and we're talking, and we go get something to eat, and I kept thinking, this is a woman who just learned that her child had been sexually abused for the last two years. And she's acting towards me like nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. And it's like another day, another evening out, we're just spending time together. That entire time. Then I take her back to the police station. And then and then she's done with her interview. The the detectives come out and say, hey, we want to talk with you. It's fine. It's something to have a conversation with me. That's what I mean. She just seemed so cold. About, about all of this. She's so detached from it. Sort of thing. It's like she can't believe what she's been told and what she has seen. She don't be, she can't believe that. I mean, I could go and it. After coming out of that place, Jason, after being shown pictures of him and your daughter and other information, being told other information, I just going ape shit. Rachel, we're to get in the car to stay with Sailor. And I go up and have my conversation with Alex, and then I go back to the car, and I'm going to take her back home because she needs a ride home. And even her demeanor of coming out with the detectives is just like, everything's fine. Did she act like that previous during previous contacts with you guys, whether it be last month, last year? Was it the same kind of yeah, interaction? Yeah. If, if anything, this is the most interaction I've ever had with her. Mm -hmm. Because when she came here, I never really interacted with her unless we were having a meal together. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're leaving and I'm taking her home. And I kept thinking as we're talking, I'm expecting her to just blow up mm -hmm. and start beating the shit out of me or scratching me or right. chatting, chew my ass out. But no, none of that. I kept waiting for this, something to explode. And matter of fact, as we're leaving, before the, before we went downstairs to the lobby, Stefan handed me his pocket knife and said, hey, you better hang on to this. I said, mm -hmm. okay. And then I, I threw it in the console of my car. As I'm leaving, they look down and I see this knife and they go, call Alex and say, hey, Stefan gave me his knife that's got it in the console. Maybe you should have it. Mm -hmm. So I swung back around and took it to her and I didn't get any questioning from her. What do you do that for? You know, mm -hmm. I kind of expected that, but I did. Ran to the piece of paper, gave it to Alex, gave him a statement, and we left. Took her back. And, you know, everything, she's acting just too normal. It doesn't seem, it, it, it's act, acting abnormal because she shouldn't be that way. Her mm -hmm. demeanor should be entirely different. Uh, and then she goes on to tell me that uh, Stefan was sexually frustrated because she she and Stefan were not having sex. She, her medication changed. She didn't have any interest in sex. And so... Uh, there was no, there was no in, in sexual in, engagement between the two of them. And I said, well, this is really unusual conversation mm -hmm. to hear this from a mother that, you know, if you ask anybody else, you know, what would your reaction to be? I said, I would be batshit crazy beating somebody up. Mm -hmm. And that was not the case. So then I, then I saw the interview and said, you know, I, I keep thinking if I saw that interview Tuesday and they called me, I said, no effing way would I have gone mm -hmm. to Orlando 
because I would have seen for myself, like everybody else did on YouTube, to they weren't buying buying the story. And what I saw Stefan doing was a re repeat of what he had, had talked to me about on uh, so. Monday, Monday evening. Video and, and pictures. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, I, I, I was just, I, I couldn't, her, her mannerisms were exactly what I, I saw and observed Wednesday mm. uh, evening, you know, okay. if, if not even better, you know. Mm. Uh, I was just a disbelief as to how she was, how, how she spoke and how she handled herself at, at the point where the bird came into the scene and, and, and was squawking or doing whatever and everybody paused and you waited and then she did it stopped and then she smiled and I said, boy, that's an unusual response to smile about this bird. It was mm -hmm. a whole demeanor was just way off. But then, you know, it carried, carried forward into Wednesday. I don't think I would have come up, but then I wouldn't have learned some other things about her had an outcome. But it's like, why was I brought to Orlando? Mm -hmm. Unless they get me out of the house. Which left me here alone. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have no idea. But you, so you watched his interview that he gave to the news, right? Yeah. Because you said that was roughly what he told you on the phone. Yeah. How did that, what was his reaction like to you? Did it seem genuine? Did it seem? You know, it was very difficult to tell when he was, I, I could never tell if he was lying to me or not. I mean, it was very difficult. Uh, I, I just, at one point I just said, you know what? If his lips are moving, he's lying, and I'll never get the truth out of him. And there's no way of breaking him. Mm -hmm. You know, we're missing a Rolex. You know, uh, or my did father's that go? my father's Rolex. So you know, he would he would never fess up to that. And again, where did all this money come from? Where's his Omega watch? You know, so I'm assuming where all this money was coming from is that maybe he sold off his Omega, maybe sold off the Rolex, mm -hmm. which I find shocking. He would sell that Rolex first before he would sell his Omega, mm -hmm. because that's how much he shares that watch. He inherited some money and immediately went out and spent seven thousand dollars on a watch like he really needed to. You know, so I have no idea where that was, but he was very impulsive. He couldn't wait. Mm -hmm. You know, if he wanted something somehow, some way, he got it. Do you guys have ties to St. Cloud? No. no. We do what? St. Cloud. No, Saint Cloud. no, no ties to St. Cloud. Ties Cloud. Yeah. Any reason why he would have went there? I have no idea. Other, uh, other than the fact that maybe he, he's just trying to get as far away as possible. I mean, I have no mm -hmm. idea. I mean, based on where you're, where what I've seen on TV, I can see where the flat occurred. You know, where he had to drive, I guess, two miles back to the hard surface. Mm -hmm. and maybe something something happened. He drove that rubber right, right off that off that wheel. I have no idea why, why why he was down there. Um, obviously, not an easy question. Do you think he was capable of doing what he did? I would, if you had asked me Sunday, I would have said no, N never in a million years. He loved that child that was supposed to be his his stepdaughter. They stayed together. He helped raise her. Um, he was not allowed to discipline her. Maddie did that. Uh, uh, Jim did that. But he acted as a peacekeeper. But no, and to kill and to kill her? No, no, no. I think if I had to, if I had to put forward a guess, I would think that it was accidental. I think that I know it's stupid. I guess I'm Irish. I guess I've had dreams that are pre precognition. Yes, they come true. But I did have a dream, and in that dream, they were in Stefan's room, and in. Maddie's room, unclothed. Jim came in to wake her up. He was confronted by the fact that they were together in a way they shouldn't have been. And I think a struggle ensued and she either hit her head or broke her neck. So I don't think that there was, there was could have been a gunshot because everybody would have heard it. I think stabbing, you found blood. So that's the only thing I can think. And that then it's she would have told Stefan and mm -hmm. like, it's all, this is all your fault. You, you caused this. This is all your fault. You have to fix it. We think he's, we think he's being the front person on this. And yeah. Sorry. The sword and, uh, I said that I mean. in this in some way. That's what we think. So then you believe that Jen would have prioritized your son more than her own daughter? Yes. Yeah. Why? Because she didn't have anybody else. Well, oh, I think they made a pact. I, I think, well, I think they, they and again, decided who was going to look at her hugging him and consoling him at that interview, you know, knowing full well what the truth is. And I think Stefan's decided to be the fall guy in this because he's feeling remorse over the over the inappropriate relationship he had with, with Maddie. And that since, you know, if he's going to be if he's going to be discovered in this, that he's going to be the, the front guy of this. But he she's just that. as culpable as he is in this. The other thing is, is that as a mother. I have seen that child cry. You do not fake the sound in his voice, the clogged sinuses that he was dealing with. Mm -hmm. The man was sick. She, no. I don't know if she just feels vindicated that, that she took care of it. I don't know, but I know that he's the only one that's feeling any worse. 
or any sorrow for that child, mm -hmm. and she is not. It, I, I told everyone when I, when I left Tuesday, Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, I said, you know, do we really have our son? Because at that point, I didn't know what the question was. Par apparently not from some of the stuff that's coming out of that, these calls into the great news. But anyway. I mean, stuff that one, one kid said that we were providing him with Hustler magazines. We've never had a Hustler magazine in our house. Hmm. We don't have booze in our house unless it's for people to come to visit. We don't drink. We don't, don't do drugs. Don't smoke cigarettes anymore. Quit those when I was, before right. I got pregnant with him. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Just a lot, a lot of it, you know, connecting the dots after the visit, what have you, and then seeing that interview, I was like blown away by that interview. So mm -hmm. I, think, I think people are making some pop up just to be sensational. Yeah. It's the internet. You got to take it for what it's worth. You know, just, um... right. What do you think? Well, I don't know if you can tell us or not. Um, I mean, I see three milestones coming up that we have to prepare for the backlash, the autopsy, obviously the charges that come out afterwards, and then if the other shoe drops, which, yeah. You know, and hopefully that happens where it diffuses some of this to where it needs to go as well. Mm -hmm. I can answer one of those questions. The autopsy is done. The autopsy was done on Saturday. But as for the other two, we can't really. Yeah. I know you guys have to get, get your yeah. act together on that because that obviously uh, is very important to the case in getting, getting all that put mm -hmm. together. You're not going to tell us how she died or when? Can't, 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 no, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. Um, when, er when everything comes to. We need, to, ending? We, we need a heads we up will. because mm -hmm. we already had people coming to the door with microphones and crap and vans out front and, and I'm getting hate mail, mm -hmm. hate texts, hate phone calls, um, people saying some pretty awful things to me about being a rotten mother. And um, what we've explained to others that we have interviewed, we can't tell you guys what to do. All that we can do is ask is that if media contacts you or something like that, you don't want to contact them directly towards us and then we will do our department will handle the media stuff. North Forest has been great. They've actually uh, they stepped up their guys. control mm -hmm. units here. They know, they, they know what we're up against, so they, they've been very helpful. Well, we, they, the Landry's were here, so they've been through this before in the last two years. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. It's that strange, tiny little North Port where people go to die. This is God's waiting room, you know, mm -hmm. a bunch of bull farts here. And um, we have two murders. Well, it wasn't here. It wasn't, no, it didn't happen here, but still, yeah. they're, they're, they're chasing the parents to Northport. Well, the Landry kid came home and they helped him, so that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But still, I don't, I don't want to feel like I have to look over my shoulder all the time. I don't want to, to feel like I have a target on me. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you have to have nails to get that out. You want me to get it out for you? I'll get it. Well, like I said, I really do appreciate you guys speaking with us. Um, since it was, our conversations were recorded. I swear everything that you told us was true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I knew there was a reason there were three. Right. So, as I said, you can't go at the parents. Yes, and Molly called your name. They they paid his way for a lot of things. You know what I mean? But he's a man. He he knew what he was doing was wrong. Right? And is he... Is Jen complicit with the unaliving of Maddie? That's the question. Because she just seems so cold. Now, if I come out of that police station after hearing that and everything, I hope we'll not be phoning up his parents to say you need to get him a lawyer. I'll be phoning up and say your son is a scumbag, vile piece of SHIT. You know what I mean? He can rot in that cell for all I care. That's what I'd be saying. Now, I won't. I think you need to get him a lawyer. He needs to stop talking. Why does he need to stop talking, Jen? Are you worried that he might actually turn around and say, oh, yeah, Jen was complicit. What are you scared of, Jen? And if the people are saying perhaps they're waiting, going to use her as a witness against Stephen? I hope not. I hope not. I hope they don't do the deal they did with uh, Adam Montgomery 
Bob's wife, where she did 18 months in prison when she was there when that little girl was killed. And she does 18 months just because they want to go as a witness. Right? I hope they don't do anything like that with Jane Soto. I really do. Because she's, she knows, I just got this feeling she's in on this more than what she is saying. You know what I mean? She's complicit in this somewhere along the line. So, we can only wait and see what law enforcement do. Will there be charges against her? We don't know. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. And please, please, please hit that like button. It helps with the YouTube analytics. It gets this, gets, it pushes the video out more. So which means more people get to see this video. Right? Not for me. I don't care. But I do care about people seeing the video. Because I think this is the, the one interview out of them all, which is the most explosive one. Right? So, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm be live soon. So, I'm going live tonight at 8pm. So if you want to come and join me, we're looking at the police interview with Stefan Stearns and the going over that police body cam again. So, till later, have a good day and thank you for being, thank you for watching my videos. And please subscribe as well if you really want to stay in. Right, thank you all.